Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a Monday. Because uh, let's go up to our friends over in Queensland. And of course, it's great to have this uh, favourite uh, MPL women's team back on the show because that is the Mitchell Ten Football Club. And of course, uh, we got three very special guests joining us right now. Before trading tonight, uh, to tell us a bit about how the season's travelling up to this point. Uh, thanks to all three for joining us. Um, hi, I'm Victoria Franklin. Lauren Bonavita and Rachel Dudley. Um, our season's going all right so far. Um, we're we're into round two now, so over a third of the way through the season, um, and we're very excited about it. Hoping to hoping to finish the season well a bit better than we're going currently but we started off pretty strong and we're kind of just going through kind of adversity between how we're performing and like getting through training sessions and we're learning from every game that we go into in different scenarios that we're put into so we're hoping to be able to learn from each game and take it into the following round yeah I really think that um last few games we've had a few um you know, team changes with injuries or, um, you know, just different positions and stuff. And I think, you know, we've had a few losses recently, but I actually think um, they've kind of helped us in a way because I think we've been able to take what we need to improve on into training and really work on specific things that, um, you know, week by week we actually are improving on. And I think little by little, it'll help us eventually. Obviously, you're in a pretty difficult stretch right now. Um, I guess what sort of things are you hoping to do tonight um, to hopefully uh, hopefully get back to on a bit of a winning streak like you did early on? I think definitely reflecting on yesterday's game and, and um, being able to address kind of like what we did well in the game for the 85 minutes and then obviously go over how it kind of broke down in the last 10 minutes. But today is more of a recovery session, so definitely preparing our bodies for like this next week's of work and looking forward to the game on Sunday. Yeah, and tonight's probably going to be a bit of a recovery night as well because obviously we played last night and we've got a Kappa Cup game coming up on Wednesday. Um, so we'll probably be doing quite a bit of analysis of the game tonight, trying to figure out where our problems are and what we need to focus on. But I think a lot of it at the moment for us is a mental game too. So we might not have to run like crazy tonight on the field just to prepare ourselves but there's a lot of analysis that we've got to to do and figure out everything we need to be working on your opponents this week you're at home to olympic obviously you know their first year in the npl at the moment as well or uh, so maybe second year in the npl um how you going to approach that game against the the newly formed olympic i think we need to kind of take in everything we've been working week by week I almost feel like last few weeks even though they haven't gone our way I think we've improved in different parts of our game and so I think this week we really got to work on like kind of combining all of that and just you know lasting a whole game because we you know we get ahead and I just think it's like towards the pointy end of the game it kind of falls a bit short for us but I think just again what Dud said just like stay mental the whole 90 minutes and just work for each other. Also like with Olympic, with the transfer into open Olympic, obviously bringing in a couple of players, like that shouldn't affect how we see them as a team. Like there's still a team in the NPL that we have gotten a result against early on the season. And we just have to continue to play our game and play with the players that we have and trust each other. And make sure that we're fighting for every minute of the 90 minutes and it should be a good match. Yeah. And I think we've also um, started to get in the mindset as well. It doesn't really matter who we're playing against or where they are on the table. Like every game, we just have to take it as um, we do what we can. Every game's a, a tough game, uh, no matter where Olympic might be sitting on the table. It's still, we'll prepare the same as what we would if we were playing Lions or City or East, um, but this weekend it's Olympics, so we're just going to uh, treat it as the most important game is our next game, right? I just had a look at the ladder. You're sitting mid-table, but you're not too far from the top four um, at this point of the season. Uh, obviously, you've got a couple of matches you've got to catch up on 
uh, compared to the top half of the ladder. Are you reasonably satisfied where you are now? Or did you think you would going to be a little bit further up the ladder? I think that um, we can all say as a team that I, I would say we're not satisfied with where we are because I know that we, um, you know, we've fallen to teams that we should have definitely beaten. And, you know, at the end of the day, every team in this league is very good. But, um, you know, those were there were some losses that should have been wins. And, you know, we very well could have been where we were towards the start of the season if we, um, you know, if we were able to get those wins. So I think we're a bit um, unsatisfied, but I think that, if anything, that's just going to drive us to, you know, really go for the next um, end of the part of the season, this half of the season. Yeah, and we're only we're only just over one third of the way through, so uh, anything can happen. And uh, yeah, we've kind of we made it a bit of a goal at the beginning of the season, uh, which I say is still a goal of ours. We want to finish top four, um, so we're definitely not planning to keep going down, but. I think we might just have had a rough couple of games, but we're definitely uh, we're definitely working on it. And we've still got goals, and we want to work our way up the table. Let's talk a bit about your coaches. Tell us a bit about your coaches there at Mitchelton. Uh, so we've got Alan. He's our head coach. Uh, Alan Waller and Jordan Kilpatrick. He's our assistant coach. Um, I think I think we're we've got a really strong uh, coaching team this year. Uh, Alan's definitely definitely says what we need to hear, uh, which I think is really good. Um, you can sometimes get a few coaches that, you know, beat around the bush a bit, but Alan definitely, you know, says what he's thinking and uh, he's very honest with us. And I think that's really helpful because, you know, we do have issues that uh, we have had and that his, you know, ability to just tell us what they are has helped us improve on all of it. And I think it's going to help us uh, even in the future and for the rest of the season uh, we never we're just always working on something so every every game we always he always tells us exactly what's going on we have video analysis sessions uh, and then through the weeks in training uh, he's very clear what he wants from us uh, so I think very happy with the coaching at the moment what I like also about the coaching staff is like some coaches are very kind of headstrong about what formation they want to play but don't really take into account the personnel they have to play that certain formation so we have actually tried out a couple different formations trying to figure out what fits our personnel so um we've consistently been trying to change formations whether it's a three back four back five back one up top whatever it may be just to kind of fill in and put our strongest 11 on the field, whoever that may be in whatever formation it is. So I think that's helped us at times. Yeah. I think also going off Lauren, I think, you know, in this stage of, um, you know, learning new things at practice that we're taking to games that also comes into consideration, like where are our players best at? And I think we're in the point of the season where we're still figuring that out. And once we get it, hopefully it's all uphill from there. How did all three get involved in the world game of football? Why did you choose it? Okay, so I I probably got involved in it because of my family, I'd say. Uh, from a young age, like all of my family are very into football and uh, my family's all English, so they're very, uh, it's like re religion, you know, is football. And so uh, I started playing probably because of that since I was a young age and then uh, just, I mean, when you play football, you love it. So, uh, every year I just kept playing because of my passion for it, I guess. I started, so I'm American. I'm one of the visa players. Um, I started playing when I was three years old and kind of just talk, took off from there and played it every year, played at like multiple different clubs. I played, um, division one university in America and then, at the end of my career, I wanted to pursue basically like a career in football. So I chose to come to Australia to uh, further my game and be able to have more opportunities. Uh, yeah, I started when I was about five, just my dad was really into football and I wasn't like all my, both of my sisters did dancing and I was just 
not didn't want to do that so I did soccer instead um and yeah I've loved it forever I also went over to America for it but I ended up tearing my ACL so I actually haven't played for the last five years but I'm it's just given me more of a drive to come back and um play again and have a bit more passion for it because I missed out on a few years but I asked the two that mentioned that they they did go to the U.S. Uh, for college, in particular. Okay, so you might as well give your college team a bit of a shout out. And have you tried to convince any of them to come to Australia? Um, so I went to Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, and um. Uh, so I was actually on the rowing team there. So actually a few of my friends have come over, but I'm still convincing a lot more to come over. <laughs> and they really want to. It's just a really long flight. So they're, yeah. And the flights are really expensive right now. So. <laughs> Get my <mistakes. laughs> yeah. I went to the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. Um, and I, I loved it there. So I'm, I definitely do miss home, but I'm definitely trying to have some of my close teammates and best friends come visit me. Um, but like Vic said, the flight, day flight, can't beat it. <laughs> Dent in the bank. Yeah, and same here. I mean, flights are still expensive now um, <laughs> that they said it. Uh, and I went to Tennessee, Wesleyan University in Tennessee. Uh, and... I would definitely love for some of my teammates to come over here, but I mean, probably also the same as uh, these guys uh, over there. There's a lot of international players. And so uh, a lot of them who I was at college with are now back in their own countries. So they'd have to be flying around from all over the world to get, <laughs> to get here, but definitely would be amazing to have them all here. What was the one highlight from your time at college? My, so I uh, played division one at UMass Amherst and my highlight was, I uh, I have two, one's personal, one's as a team, but um, we had a coaching staff change coming in my freshman year. So every year we were there, we made the conference playoffs, which had been a long time since the, like UMass had made it to the playoffs. And then uh, in my final year, I had the, pleasure of being able to join the top 10 all-time goal scoring list. Um, I, again, I didn't do soccer in college, but um, for rowing, I got, we got ninth in the country at NCAAs, which was pretty cool. Um, and I think, I mean, there was a lot of highlights for me uh, being over there, um, but probably this might not be a highlight, but just something that really stands out that I was kind of funny. Uh, one game, my first ever game that we played over there, uh, we went to uh, South Carolina and it started, it started like raining during the game. And then there was a bit of lightning. And at like the 70th minute, we all had to come off the field, get back into the bus and just like wait in there for literally, you have to, there's all these rules. Like you have to wait 30 like, minutes. Yes. Yeah, like three minutes between lightning or something. And I just remember it was like my first ever game over there. And there was a couple other freshmen like from all Europe places. And we were just like, what is going on? Are we going home? Or, and we weren't going home. We just had to wait until there was like a three minute gap between the lightning. We ended up being in this bus for like an hour and a half and then got back off the bus and then continued on from the 70th minute, like to the end of the game. <laughs> Um, which I just thought was so such a crazy thing to do and like during that time we were like all just sitting in the bus like eating snacks and whatever and and so it was like a really random half time but not half time and yeah that was just crazy which is so different because here we don't stop for lightning which I find insane <laughs> that we don't stop if we see lightning and in America you see lightning you stop yes <laughs> Yes, I know that rule too. So that's what I was laughing about that because I know that one. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you this. Now, obviously, you're from the beautiful part of Massachusetts um, up there in um, the east side, uh, the eastern on the east coast. What did you choose from cold uh, Massachusetts down to uh, hot Queensland? 
I am not a cold person. I like like I, I like the fall, but I'm not a huge winter person. So I was quite excited when I heard that Queensland was summer when I was coming over here and they don't get snow. Um, I mean, it's 25 degrees here and it's like negative degrees at my house at home. So I am enjoying it very much. Uh, what position do all three play on the field? And if you had a dream position, we love to convince Alan to put you where that be, be honest. Um, I play center back and this is so wild, but my dream position would definitely be strike. <laughs> I love scoring goals. <laughs> yeah, but that would never happen. So oh. <laughs> I am a striker and my dream position is striker. So I think I'm set in that position at the moment. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a winger and I love being a winger, so I'd say that's my dream position. But also at the moment we are we are like mixing up formations a little bit. So I've been playing like a nine with LB um the last couple of games. Uh but definitely my dream position is on the wing. I love it on the wing. <laughs> so two part question. The first part is what does the sport of the world game mean to the three of you, especially playing for Mitchelton? And then the second part of the question is, what have all three learned from each other on and off the field? Um, okay, I'll go with that. Um, the sport of the world game means a lot to me. It's basically like almost my whole life. I think anyone who's played soccer for that many years of their life is... Uh, of course, it's going to be very meaningful to them. And Mitchelton specifically, uh, it feels like a bit of a home to me, to be honest. I've been here for um, a couple of years now. And um, just one that really stands out at Mitchie to me that I just love early here, especially on the committee, like all of the um, all the people who, you know, work here and run teams and um, the president of the club, everyone is just so supportive of each other and you – you just come here whenever you want and any any people who are here will just recognise you, say hello, and you'll have a chat with them. So definitely Mitchelton, the community means a lot to me. I love it here because of that. Um, and obviously the world game means a lot to me because I've been playing it my whole life and love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely agreeing with Duds. I've played it my whole life and it's taken me places that – I can't even imagine I would be if I didn't play it. Um, like all over the States, I'm an American sitting here in Australia. Um, and it just brought me so many life lessons that I think being not in a sport, I don't think would have kind of shaped me in the person I am today or like what I like my morals and what I believe in and different things like that. And I mean, I've only been here for about four months, but the people surrounding this club, like the teammates, their families have just made me feel so welcomed. And like, I just completely jumped in like two feet in and didn't even look back. And I'm so grateful to have met everyone on this team and their families and everyone on the committee here at Mitchelton. And I wouldn't trade this experience for anything. Uh, yeah. Um, it means a lot to me. I, again, been playing like almost my whole life, except for the last five years. Um, but I almost think that's made me like want it, want it more a bit. Like that time away, um, you know, injured at the start and then just ended up growing. Um, yeah, I just, you know, every day I wasn't playing. I was so excited to, you know, loved the rowing at the time, but I was really excited to, you know, it to all be over and to just move on and choose soccer and you know with Mitchie I'm really grateful that Alan um took that chance on me and uh, you know brought me back into the club knowing that I hadn't been playing for so long um and I really appreciate him and you know the team and get, getting to be part of it all again. I think I've learned I mean me personally I like both of them I would say are one of my two best friends on the team like I go to them for a lot and whether it's like I'm not having a good day, I will reach out to either of them and they'll definitely make me feel better. Or if like we're in the middle of a game, like I know I can look to either of them to get like the motivation or like the drive to like that one more play. 
or whatever it is, like both of them work so hard at any aspect of training, the game, halftime, anything it is, they're always pushing there. And I think them doing that gives me uh, like the little extra boost that I need. And it's also like teammates that turned into friends that I definitely will keep in contact with whenever I do go back. Yeah. Oh, you go. Oh. <laughs> um, I definitely have to agree with LB. Um, these are definitely some of my best friends in the team and um, probably uh, individually things that I've learned. I know that uh, Vic and I spend a lot of time talking about the games <laughs> after they happen and like analyzing like uh, I think yeah we probably all end up analyzing with each other everything that's gone on um and it's just like you know a lot of videos like of you know do we think this was the right thing to do here or like uh you know and it's just really nice to have teammates um to talk to about that and also I mean obviously uh I'm very grateful that LB is here as a striker because I mean she can score from anywhere and she's an insane striker and that's something that I feel like I can learn a lot from like being playing on the wing I I like running with the ball and defending and all of that type of stuff like in the middle of the field but probably one of my biggest weaknesses my whole like soccer career has been like scoring goals and uh, LB is like the greatest goal scorer ever so um definitely yes. <laughs> definitely that's something learning uh, something to learn from her um I agree with both of them I you know rant to them all the time about every game every situation um you know coming back into it after a while I feel like I overanalyze some situations and it's nice to have you know teammates who just bring me back down to earth a bit and like oh it's like not that deep or like you know they help me take accountability for things and just see the game in a different way which you know even though in the heat of the moment can you know be frustrating it's it, it's really I think I think we've all helped each other improve in certain situations I mean I definitely feel like week to week um, I've like taken a lot just from you know watching video and talking to these guys and yeah just yeah it's been good I think it's also nice I think we can all agree that uh, maybe we love the game too much um, but <laughs> um, but yeah it's just it's nice having people who you know, you can just keep talking to about soccer and that's just always a hot topic, you know, like it never gets old. Um, we can just talk for hours about the game and uh, we all just love it that much. So it's a nice nice to have people you share uh, like this passion with. Let's finish up a couple of lighthearted questions about your teammates uh, there at Mitchelton, um, which is who's the comedian, the best singer and the best dance on the team? I don't think we have a singer. <laughs> Shocking. Um, <laughs> uh, I think honestly, I think we all, I think we all bring a little something to the table. <laughs> I don't know if we practices usually there's a good amount of laughing. Yeah, I, I don't know who starts it, but <laughs> I think <laughs> it doesn't end. It though. doesn't end. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody brings like everyone has their times to shine you know um I don't know who the best dancer would be no whoever I don't know who we've seen I don't know like, if I've seen anyone dance yeah we don't we, yeah. we're very very soccer wise at training we're not like Vic sisters we don't dance maybe um, we can give that answer to you at the end of the season I feel like we haven't got there yet okay, <laughs> okay. all right yeah. I've never seen Alan dance let's just give it to Alan yeah Alan. he surely would be the best <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Alan could bust down some moves. <laughs> you probably can sing too. <laughs> oh my gosh, actually, no, I have heard Alan sing. Um, <laughs> no, a couple of weeks ago after training, he's a really, really good singer. He was singing, um, oh, there's a, something like, you know, the song, it's hip to be squared. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> And it, was, it wasn't that one. It was something really like that. Um, okay, <laughs> Alan gets best singer. He actually <laughs> amazed me that day. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll figure out the other two for you eventually. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might. I think all three might get a gold star from Alan uh, after that answer. Yeah. <laughs> that was the wrong song, but it's something just like that. <laughs>
<laughs> She's gonna remember it at the end of training today. I'll get her to sing it today. What were you singing the other day? <laughs> it's on it to hide it as well. Uh, it was oh uh, yeah, okay. we'll have to get back to you. Sorry. So that song. Do either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I specifically have to wear my hair a certain way and I eat the same thing for every game. What's that? What do you eat? Yeah. Um, I have a ham I have a ham and cheese sandwich. Not toasted. Not toasted. Mm -mm. Just ham, cheese, and bread. Mm, there you go. And oh sorry, you go. And then I just have my hair in braids with a ponytail. I feel like I've always tried to keep I've always tried to make one, but my um, attention span is I can't. Like, I just don't have one. I try. I think I try and force it sometimes, and it goes away, and I'm like, oh, I forgot that. <laughs> so, I no, <laughs> that's my answer. Um, I don't have one that I, like, have to do, but always on game day, I wake up very, very excited. So, um, most games that I can remember, I've had, like, a bit of a – dance party by myself in my room. Um, you're the best dancer. Dad is the best dancer. No, Alan is. But... No, he's the best he's singer. singer. Oh. You're the best dancer. Oh, so cool. Oh. Stop it. And we're all comedians. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> we must be comedians. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, but no, just like get the music going, you know, before game day uh, to get you really into the mood. Um, but I've realized, I found out that you can't start partying for game day too early else then you get out all your excitement <laughs> and then I have to have a nap before I leave just to get energy so back. specific. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, I just, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> Is there a particular song that you dance to in the morning? Uh, um, well, a lot of Taylor Swift and uh, um, basically whatever is in my playlist, but that's a lot of Taylor Swift and <laughs> Katy Perry. Um, <laughs> just a lot. Of all 2010s, I'm hearing. Yeah, <laughs> Miley Cyrus, you know, all the good ones. Um, but then more Taylor Swift yeah. after that. <laughs> so in other words, you're Swift. In other words, you're a Swifty. Oh yeah, of course. Yep. <laughs> so we'll finish with these last two, uh, which is: uh, Does a team have a fine system this year? Oh yeah, yes, we but do. Are I we think we. On top of that? I think all the people. Yeah, I think people who got fined are being low key, but we need to get up on. That. Yeah. We do have a fine system. Yeah. I don't know if we've collected, but we do have. I'm going to have to look at that. We're going to have to figure and that think, out. I think there's probably a lot of people who owe a lot of fines that we've just not thought about. Yes. Um, We're going to go have to maybe, watch the game for yeah. over. We'll have a whole weekend marathon of watching all games, trying to find who Picking hits everyone's the crossbar. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the last one is, what would be your advice to people that should get involved in the world game of football? Do it. Uh, it's, sorry, <laughs> that was not great advice. Um, <laughs> uh, firstly, do it. Um, but because uh, you meet so many incredible people, definitely like some of my best friends. Well, yeah, most of my best friends I've met like through the world game. Um, and it's just nice to you know, when you've got so many other things going on in your life, like, you know, work, uh, everything else, it's just nice to have, um, whether you're good or don't want to pursue it as a career, like, like just to come three nights a week or four nights a week to hang out with your best friends, basically, and do something that you love, uh, run around. Uh, I know that running around makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, it's just a great a great place to be when you're with people who have the same passions as you and you'll get to just hang out playing soccer for a couple of hours, a couple of nights a week. Uh, so definitely 
join the Vogue game. I think definitely do it. I think it's taught me so many life lessons and has bring in, brought so many like teammates, friends, some people I now call family into my life. Um, I've been able to travel to amazing places, but like I wouldn't have had the adversity of coming through, whether it's like injuries or travel or whatever it may be that has helped me become who I am today. And I think it's such like a rewarding experience being part of a team. And like Dud said, sharing like the passion of your love for the game with each other and like growing with each other and bringing you together as a team. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I feel like, you know, at, at such a young age, I was able to travel around the country and the world. And um, I'm really grateful for a lot of my experiences. Like, you know, those countries I never would have been to if I didn't um, do soccer. So I really appreciate that. And, you know, a lot of my friends who played other sports, one thing I've noticed about football is like, it literally, you can play for so long. Like I, this is my first time playing technically as an adult. Um, and, you know, the, you know, my rowing career was over because there's not much left in rowing, but soccer, there's just so many avenues. And I, I found that a lot of my friends who played sport, like don't play anymore because, you know, they don't have the same avenues. So I think, uh, you know, football is a great, um, especially in Australia, it has so many levels, so many competitions, and you can just play as long as you want. Yeah. I've got to ask uh, this question. So how's the American accent going around your teammates? Hey, she's, um, she she's got our <laughs> no nailed. You can give an impression. How do you say no? No. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be every single warm up. There are no. There's definitely some words that words. um are a bit different. Like an esky is the cooler. Um, I know. A is a stubby cooler. <laughs> different, you know. De definitely takes a little bit for me to understand. So, like, especially when they you don't announce yet, you just kind of like say something and then just stop Hope speaking and like you figure it out. Um, I don't figure it out. So that's <laughs> their that's their on. Australian accent to me. I'm not sure mine to them, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, okay, and then I'm gonna change this then. How's the Aussie accent going? I think I have mine down pretty good. Yeah, it'll be Scott her no. I can say the word no, that's about it. <laughs> Or reckon, I tried to put reckon in a little bit, but it just doesn't sound good with an American accent, so I don't know. Did you ever say g'day? G'day? Yeah, you should take that to you. <laughs> That's pretty good. Shrimp yeah. on Barbie. <laughs> you know what people say? Go put some shrimp on the Barbie. We don't even say shrimp. Yeah, no, we say <laughs> Oh, you know that. Yeah, I work <laughs> <laughs> well all three thank you so much for getting up so you time before training to join us uh, best of luck against olympic uh, this weekend uh for your normal um of course premier league matches but obviously as you mentioned you do have the keeper cup as well uh coming up the, this week as well so best of luck with that and hopefully this week you come away with two wins uh from two matches yeah. this week Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It was great talking to you. No worries. Of course, you want to get involved with the Mighty uh, Mitchell Team Football Club. Of course, we'll put all the details up and uh, how you can go get involved in, with the Mitchy family uh, up there in Northern Brisbane. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away here on the Tasty Celebrations.